My thirst roars to life. I cannot remember the last time my parched throat had relief. I scramble in the first cask and pull frantically at the cork. The theft of a few cups mean nothing, I tell myself. The casks will be ruined by the flood regardless. Finally, the cork surrenders to my attack, and a thick red liquid bursts forth from the hole. This is no wine. It is blood, still warm from the body, whether animal or something else, I cannot say. The foul liquid soon mixes with the rising floodwaters, creating a warmth that laps against my thighs. By all the god, are the rest of these casts filled with blood as well? I lack the courage to confirm my suspicion. Disgust quickly becomes fear as I turn to flee, but my weakened legs betray me, sending me toppling into the red ocean below. The smell of death is everywhere. It threatens to consume me. I must escape this hell. Crawling on all fours like an animal, holding back screams lest any foulness enter my mouth, I lurch forward through the red waters and out of the room to freedom. I squint down the corridors and proceed east. I squinted down the... The dim corridors. The water is risen to my chin. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. I'm not gonna do this. I can't. Po you can't possibly remember it. Hey, that's a super memory to do this. That's really dumb. That is pretty lame. Especially since it's the same words. It's not like you can... It's not like you can uh, differentiate by like different decisions. It's just go east, go west, go north. So yeah, that's kind of lame. That is kind of lame. What about this one? No, screw him. It's going to be like that. I guess we'll just give it one go, and if we fail, this 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 place can just die. Mr. Fies, Vice, you're a book. All this word stuff should be right up your alley. Hmm, yes, quite. Well, enough chatter. Let's be off. A colony of massive sculptures was visible in the distance, their tall forms scraping against the sky. Vice and Van Damme had never seen such a sight, and their eyes widened as they tried to take it in. Hey, Vice, we keep walking, but those things don't get any closer. I don't get it. Are they really that big? As Vice considered his answer, the sun beat down on them with renewed ferocity. Perhaps they are some manner of mirage. Under this heat, a mirage or tour would be hardly be an unexpected sight. Van Damme nodded and wiped the sweat off his brow, leaving a trail of sand in its place. He thought he'd never been so thirsty. The ancient road on which they walked was a blackened cr and cracked with age. Here and there, thin wisps of grass pushed up through the rocky surface as if defying those who had laid his mater this material down over their home. The heat reflecting from the road made Van Damme lightheaded. <coughs> Suddenly, he dropped to his knees and slammed his hand against the black surface. God damn it, he said. This, if this is, is this some kind of joke? Well, I'm not laughing. The complaining had already begun. Vice tried not to let his eyes roll too much. A joke, he said? No, no joke. This road leads to the city of art. Perhaps the path itself is simply some manner of grand artistic work. Oh, come on. That's bullshit and you know it. Possibly, but I think of this in this way might make it easier for you to bear. Van Damme glanced at Vice's grinning face, cursed silently to himself, and resumed walking. As time passed, Van Damme's feet grew more painful and his throat drier than he thought possible. My throat's getting dry too. <laughs> he tried not to look further than the next step ahead, because the bright sunlight made him hesitant to trust his own senses. We are definitely getting closer, said Vice in an effort to cheer his companion. Yes, this is much certain. Encouraged, Van Damme lifted his gaze. Suddenly, he stopped walking, choosing instead to stand in the middle of the road with his mouth and eyes wide open and his finger pointing in the distance. Water, he cried. It's water. Water, asked Vice. Preposterous. I don't see any water. It's right there, idiot. Can't you see it? Look, the sun is reflecting off of it. Without waiting for a response, Van Damme sprang to life and bounded toward the site. What in the... There was no water, there was nothing but sand in every direction. Van Damme closed his eyes and sighed as Vice floated up behind him, chuckling softly. I believe this is known as a mirage, he said. Many a desert traveler has spoken of such things. Van Damme shook his head, bewildered. Suddenly he pointed off in the distance, his eyes wide once more. Wait, there it is, I just missed it, look, it's right there. Van Damme sprinted off again, leaving Vice with no choice but to follow. After a few minutes of running, Van Damme came to a halt. I could have sworn it was right around here. 
Confused, he put his hands up to his eyes and rubbed them vigorously. As soon as he stopped, he noticed a blue shimmering pool of clear water just over the next rise. With a shout, he bounded off in search of it. The chase continued for nearly an hour until an exasperated vice finally floated up to, the Van, to Van Dam and struck him in the face with his cover. You damn bl blithering fool, stop this at once. There is no water here. Van Damme's face clouded. There, there isn't. There is not, and perhaps next time you will listen to me when I tell you as much. Vice paused for a moment and continued speaking in a slightly kinder tone. However, I suppose this mad chase was not altogether wasted. It seems we have arrived in the city of art. Van Damme looked up, stretched out before him was a row of impossibly tall sculptures. Their journey was at an end. They're huge, cried Van Damme, completely for forgetting the heat and the pain of the past few hours. I've, I've never seen anything so big. Each sculpture was formed from roughly the same shape, a tall rectangle that stretched upward to the sky, but that is where the similarities ended. Most were covered with panes of glass that reflected the light in a thousand directions, while others seemed to be nothing but frames of steel. Some had tall spires on their tops, while others possessed triangular caps. What kind of city is this, said Van Damme. Where are the people? Where are the houses? Perhaps the land is intended exclusively for artistic use. The debate continued as they made their way through the city. Miracles of artistry were everywhere. Great iron gates with wheels sat silent on steel rails. Beautifully carved works with lights of red, amber, and green dangled over every street. As they moved away from the massive sculptures, they found a great array of smaller ones. Some were covered in glass or brick, but many were composed of materials that they had never before encountered. The sheer variety of colors and styles were staggering, unable to find a theme or purpose to the abstract works around them. Van Damme and Vice eventually fell silent. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shape of humans. Van Damme uttered a sigh of relief as he approached them. Finally, I was getting tired of modern art. The three statues were indistinguishable except for a single word chiseled into their right arms. One read Alpha, one read, Ome one read Beta, and the final read Gamma. As Van Damme moved to touch the nearest statue, a bird flew from the top of one of the sculptures. Alighting on the statue's shoulder, it emitted a brief, beautiful song that took the form of a words. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. With that, the bird departed. As if on cue, the three statues shuddered to life, acquiring color and form as they began to breathe. Hey, look at that, said Van Damme. They're alive. The triplets bowed low before Van Damme. Please, said Alpha, you have to get me out of this nightmare. I am real. This reminds me a lot of, uh, um, the labyrinth. <laughs> this is where they have those, uh, you know, those creatures that, that each say the other one's lying. Anyway, uh... Stop lying, said Beta. He turned to Van Damme and threw his hands in the air. Alpha's a fake, you know. I'm the real one. What a load of crap, said Gamma. Beta is fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. Huh, let's see. Their respective pleas given the three statues returned to their frozen state as silence once again enveloped the city. So let's see, let's before we go on. Alpha says he's real. Okay. Beta tells him to stop lying. And then Gamma says that Beta is fake. When you consider all the statements, only one of them could be the real thing, said Vice. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. Okay, so so the so I think because the others claimed the others were lying, therefore they therefore the the only one that actually spoke truth without uh, saying the others were wrong was Alpha. 
so let's see. The real one is Alpha. The eyes of the statue shone with an eerie light. The light grew stronger and stronger until Van Damme and Vice were forced to turn away. I did it. Huh. Well, that was a mistake. What? Yeah. You best at- What? Yes, this is the worst job ever. How is that a mistake? What is this crap? I don't get this. Oh my god. I'm terrible. I'm terrible at these freaking puzzles. Well, that one is just all luck, so... Unless you have a super memory, you know. You have to actually remember, like... It's like draw a map or something, I don't know. Now, this would be easy. You just skip to it and make a different choice. Let me try Gamma this time. The real one is Gamma. The eyes of the statue shone with an eerie light. The light grew stronger. What the heck? Yes, that was a mistake too. Of course. Screw you and your dreams, buddy. Beta, though Van Damme's voice betrayed a notable lack of confidence, he was relieved to see Vice nodding at him. If Alpha were telling the truth, began Vice in a dry and tones of lecturer, Beta and Gamma would be fakes. Wait, if Alpha were telling... Beta and Gamma would be fakes. But in that case, Gamma's claim that Beta is a fake would be the truth, even though Gamma is a liar. Therefore, that theory crumbles. Oh my god, it's so complicated. Jeez. Now let us presume that Gamma spoke the truth. That makes Alpha and Beta liars. In this situation, however, Beta is calling Alpha a liar, which would leave us with two statues telling the truth. Finally, let us assume that Beta is telling the truth. If so, Alpha and Gamma's lies would make sense. Therefore, Beta must be real. I have no idea what just was said. As Vice finished his explanation, Alpha and Gamma crumbled soundlessly into dust while Beta sprang to life once more. Congratulations, villager, said Vice in a cheerful voice. The time to awaken has arrived. Thank you for saving me, cried the villager. He dropped to his knees and bowed his head as low as they could go before the uncomfortable Van Damme pulled him to his feet. Why did you have a dream like this? Have you been to this city before? The villager spoke slowly, looked around at the bizarre objects and sculptures that dotted the landscape, then shook his head. I don't think so. I mean, it's impossible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this, but at the same time, I feel like I've been seen it before. Deja vu, muttered Van Damme. It's just like that damn mare. The, the vague sense of unease that struck Van Damme during the mare's dream spread once more through his mind. Okay, that was terrible. I am positive I've seen that place before. Stop. I get enough foreboding crap from everyone else in my life. Don't you start to. Huh. So what did we get for doing that mission? Hmm. Huh. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look up the, the answers for this so we're not wasting time. I'm going to see what... Uh, 
what the correct choices are for this so we can see what happens, okay? So, we'll return in uh, just a moment. <laughs> 